Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Um, most everybody remember 8.30, but uh, I'm glad you could make it and get a little extra time to visit this morning uh, for some of you. Uh, today's Father's Day. Um, happy Father's Day to, to all our fathers. Um, and uh, we're so thankful for, for godly fathers, Christian fathers, to raise their children up in their faith. And you think of them and give thanks for them today. Uh, a couple announcements before we begin. Uh, sometimes you know, I run across a book or I read a book that it, it's it's pretty good. And um, this one I uh, picked up and uh, read uh, really quickly. I mean, it, uh, just read it in one evening. But it's uh, Unoffendable, um, which is you know pretty you know pretty something that we need to need to uh, to be right now because it seems like everybody is offended by something. So it's, it's a pretty good book, uh, you know, theologically, there's, there's nothing, nothing, no triggers in there. Um, I wish the author would have addressed a couple more things that he didn't address. The author is Grant Hansen, and uh, he's not a theologian, he's a, uh, he was a youth pastor, and then he's a, a Christian radio show host. So I don't know if you've heard him on the radio or not, uh, but uh, it's, it's a pretty good book. So I, I went ahead and I bought three more copies. So I got four copies of this book around. And uh, I'll put this one, the two of them are already out. Oh, you want? Okay. Just read it and bring it back. And then I'll, I've got another one I'll put out there for second service. But uh, it's a good book and it's really appropriate to the times that we find ourselves in right now. Um, also out in the narthex we have the absentee ballots. Uh, so if anyone would like to vote, uh, Phyllis, just, they just go up and see you after service. And uh, you can get that taken care of. Uh, also, uh, if you have any questions, I don't know if there's any more. Are there any more uh, discussion forms printed out? Because there was a change uh, in the ballot. Or on the, I don't know if there's any more out there than our text. I forgot to look. But uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can ask me or Phyllis uh, regarding uh, the, the amendments. And then lastly, we have some sign-up sheets out there for readings and for prayers on upcoming services. So if anyone would like to volunteer uh, for either of those, uh, please do so. The sign-up sheet's right there on the information table. Uh, with that, let us begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we gather together uh, to hear your word, we give thanks for all of your marvelous words, for the salvation that you have won and is freely given through your Son, Jesus Christ. As we praise your holy name in song and in word, and as we hear, hear your word and as it speaks to us, your law and your gospel, may we be encouraged and strengthened to follow you fearlessly. Bless this service and all who are here and all who are watching from home or wherever they may be. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We begin with our opening hymn. Thank you.
But um, that was actually from um, Mark's album that he did. And uh, it's hard to go wrong with singing uh, scripture. So uh, let us pray. Oh God, because of your abiding presence, always goes with us. Keep us aware of your daily mercies that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, all. Good morning. Gentlemen, happy Father's Day to you. Uh, the one day that they honor us, but I'm sure in most of our houses, every day is Father's Day, correct? Yes. And yeah, to you also. Thank you. With that, good morning. Readings. Our Old Testament reading, written in Jeremiah 27 through 13. O oh Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him, say all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived, and then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not overcome me. They will be greatly ashamed, but they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. The Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's epistle lesson reading is written in Romans 6, 12 through 23. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, to make you obey their passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you, have pres if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things to which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and it leads, and at and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. These twelve Jesus sent out, 
instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops, and do not let, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. Therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny my before my father who is in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You unravel me with a melody.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It was Franklin Delano Roosevelt who said in his first inaugural address, March 4, 1933, that the only thing that we have to fear is fear itself. He described that fear as a, a nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. Of course, the fact is, there would have been no reason for the 32nd president of our country to assert his firm belief that there was nothing to fear unless there actually was something to fear. This country was in the throes of a staggering economic crisis, the Great Depression, sparking fears that were not nameless or unjustified. Later in his speech, Roosevelt himself admitted only a foolish optimist can deny the dark realities of the moment. Dark realities that gave substance to people's real and understandable fears. And what are the fears of today? What are your fears? Do you fear for your safety and that of your family? This pandemic, politics, unemployment, civil unrest, poverty, Isolation, the government itself, anarchy, loss of freedom, harassment, injustice, death. And we can make a list that goes on and on and on and on. Each of you fearing things perhaps very different from one another. But I think we all can agree that there are things in this world that cause people, including Christians, including some of you, fear. I wonder if you think of those fears of today, your fears, are they as great as those of the disciples? Perhaps or perhaps not. But they are no less real. Whatever your fears may be at this very moment, Jesus' words give you direction and peace for today and for tomorrow and for eternity. In today's text, Jesus repeatedly tells his disciples, to have no fear. As he sends them out to proclaim the coming of the kingdom to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yet Jesus knows and acknowledges that he is sending them out not just to sheep, but as sheep in the midst of wolves. His very words of admonition and encouragement, have no fear, show that he knows that there, are, that there is much to fear, at least from a human point of view. As we consider today's text, we are challenged to face and to name our fears and to rejoice in confessing and proclaiming that Jesus is greater than they are. As Jesus speaks to us from today's text, he knows that those who follow him have almost everything to fear. Rejection. No one likes to be rejected. And most of us probably have had experience to give us a deep fear of rejection. The first disciples had to face this fear regularly and repeatedly. And still today, many reject not only the message of the gospel, but also those who proclaim this message. You, the church, which is undoubtedly one reason you may shrink from bearing witness to Christ more boldly and more consistently in your daily lives and in your vocation. Intimidation. Jesus warns his disciples to expect attempts to silence them by various tactics of intimidation. How many of you experienced intimidation in your attempts to bear witness to Christ by word or deed? Today I see it in our virtual world very clearly. Whenever you get on the internet or social media, Christians are intimidated into silence through shaming, persecution. Jesus puts no words in his text as he describes the persecution that may, no, his words are will be encountered by those who bear witness faithfully to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Although Christians in America have largely been spared this type of persecution up until now, we should not naively expect that this will always be the case. And evidence of more subtle forms of persecution are increasing, such as losing your job for adhering to Christian values and biblical morality. Execution. Jesus clearly and explicitly, explicitly warned the 12 disciples that they needed to be prepared to be put to death as the result of the sinful opposition that they would face. And most of them eventually were. Martyrdom for the sake of the gospel has been a reality throughout the history of the church. And it continues to be a reality still today in many parts of the world. Did you know that 40 and a half million of an estimated 70 million Christians who have died for Christ did so in the last 100 years? They have been the darkest periods of martyrdom by the sheer number of Christians killed, ever. In countries like Iran, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, India, North Korea, and Indonesia, Christians are arrested, tortured, and imprisoned just for converting to Christianity. Christians are, in fact, the most persecuted religious group in the world today, with the greatest number of victims. And the most atrocious human rights abuses are inflicted and committed against Christians solely because of their beliefs and activities. Our beliefs and our activities. Atrocities such as torture, enslavement, rape, imprisonment, killings, and even crucifixion. If we do not live in the fear of martyrdom for the sake of the gospel, this is due only to the grace of God and the mercy of God. Yet we would do well to ask ourselves the question today, what if? The good news according to today's, today's text is that even amid all this, those who follow Jesus have absolutely nothing to fear. Rejection, intimidation, persecution, execution, death. Jesus has been there, done that. Our Lord Jesus does not ask us to follow where he is not first gone. Because Jesus has faced every enemy that causes us to fear, we can be assured that he understands our fears today, can sympathize with all of our temptations to be afraid, and will provide mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Jesus has overcome every enemy that threatens to paralyze us. Suffering of every kind is overcome. When we suffer, God is able to use it for our ultimate good and for his glory. Romans 5, or Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Satan and all his works and ways overcome. 1 John 3, 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Death and hell overcome. Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus is with us, intimately caring for us in every fear-filled situation. He knows everything about you. Even the hairs of your head are all numbered. He cares for you. No sparrow falls without his notice, and you are of more value than many sparrows. The testimony of the psalmist, which Mark sang today, is wonderfully fulfilled in Christ and comforts us. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High has absolutely nothing to fear. Fear will have its day and its say, but Jesus will have the last word. Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. Therefore, therefore we can joyfully, boldly, and fearlessly bear witness to Jesus in this world until he comes again to deliver us from every form and cause of fear. 
proving once and for all that Jesus is greater than our fears. No faithful under shepherd of the good shepherd would stand before his flock and glibly tell him, you have nothing to fear. According to Jesus in Matthew 10, those who seek to follow him have much to fear from a human point of view. Rejection, intimidation, all kinds of opposition, suffering, even persecution that in many cases throughout history and still today has led to martyrdom for Christ. But from God's point of view, we have absolutely and unequivocally nothing to fear. Ever. No matter the circumstances. Why? Because Jesus has faced the source of every fear, has overcome every enemy that causes us to fear, and has promised to be with us and watch over us in every fearful situation and to guide us safely to our heavenly home, where fear will be banished forever and ever. Fear truly is a liar. When it says you cannot, our Lord says that you can and you will. Fear not. Father, fill us with trust in your word, your promises and Banish all fear from our hearts as we follow your Son, bearing witness to all the world of your salvation and life that you receive through faith in him, who with you and the Holy Spirit is one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Having heard God's word, let us rise together and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the Holy Church throughout the world and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this nation, that God's gracious word have free course, and that his righteousness prevails. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all people, that we be preserved from discord and strife, that God grants us protection in every time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widow and orphan, for the sick and dying, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Mark, Jim, Patrick, Len, for continued health. For the family of Emma Hobson. For all dads, giving thanks for godly fathers, we ask your blessings upon them. We lift up these and all those that we name in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please rise for Go serve.